What is up, all you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. You are watching and listening to Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode 126. With me today is StuTube, my good buddy. You've heard him before. We interviewed yeah. him, and, and now we're now we're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about an anime. Uh, which which Stu, tell us about your love for anime. So, yeah, man, I mean, I just, you know, I grew up as a kid, you know, I started watching with, you know, watching anime, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, all the classic, like, mid-90s stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, Toonami. Toonami, Cartoon Network. That's, uh, that's where it all started. You know, uh, Cowboy Bebop, Mobile Suit Gundam, Tenchi Muyo, the classics. Oh, good old Tenchi, Rurouni Kenshin. Yeah. Yeah, all those Rurouni guys. Kenshin, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, a little mm-hmm. bit of Inuyasha, Shonen anime, mm-hmm. um... I couldn't really get into man um once i became like i don't know high school aged uh dragon ball z was probably the last shonen anime that i was like really really hardcore into okay. um shonen anime is you know any anime that's aimed at like young boys lots of fighting violence you know stuff like that makes sense um, so we're here to discuss one particular anime and uh, this was an anime that was recommended by wildfire one himself yes. Yes, I, I came. I came to Stu, and it's because we both have a, a particular love of games. We we we're big video game fans, and uh, this was the 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 anime is what uh, High Score Girl, right? Yep. And on it's Netflix. On, on Netflix. Thank you. You said it was uh, two seasons. Yep. Yep. It's two seasons. Uh, I think like uh, 24, 25, maybe twenty six episodes. You, most most animes I feel like that are really 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 good are around 25 26 episodes yes and yeah the, the 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 seasons seemed long too didn't they they didn't seem like a four episode season no uh, no they, they're they're like a full length yeah. season both of them it was very well and, and the animation uh the animation like at first i, I that's one of the things i warned him about i was like hey man this the animation's kind of weird at first like but you, it grows on you. a good example is there's a there's a blonde gal with really weird eyelashes Eyebrows. uh but they go like all around her eye the way she's drawn yeah they actually drew her eyelashes it's it's hard to describe <laughs> I, it's all the right around her eye it's it's ridiculous almost but you get you, it's one of those things that you watch so much that you got used to it like you accepted her as is normal right yeah yeah after it i eventually stopped noticing it exactly and i almost kind of started to like it yeah you know what i mean like why don't i see this in other any other character where you know, right. everyone else started looking weird um so before we get hardcore into the story and the plot and all this stuff um we were looking into it a little bit and there was a really cool story like the basic the basic premise of this anime is basically um it's all about video games and it's about like a timeline of video games like and we're not talking like fake video games. No, they use real titles in this game. And it, I think the first thing you see is what uh, Street Fighter Two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it Street Fighter Two or was it one of the Street Fighter games, like the first one? To be, I I don't remember. I think it, I want to say it was Street Fighter Two. Yeah, me too. And then they then there was like Street Fighter Two Alpha, and then Street Turbo. Fighter. Two, you know what I mean? Yeah. All the all the. But the, the the thing is, is is they use dates like when they came out, and it for me personally, this is like. A situation where I remember this, like I grew up when these games came to America, and you know when they when they were ported to America from Japan. Of course, this this is all about them coming out in Japan. I can remember having almost the same conversations he's having with his friends, and so it it, it hits me like right here. Right. Um, but what I was going to get to is that there's the, they they talk about a lot of games from like Final Fantasy to like fighting games, um, but there was a there was a there was a news article or something that we saw or something that we looked up earlier that said to do with the police going to, uh, uh, yeah. So, well, before, <clears throat> apparently before, um, this anime was an anime, it was actually a manga. And in 2014, police from the Osaka district in Japan actually like raided the offices of square Enix from a complaint from SNK about copyright infringement. And they actually had to pull the mangas off the shelf stop publishing them and there i guess there it was square enix and snk were about to go to court over all this until they came up with some kind of agreement um but it's just kind of crazy to imagine that a bunch of police officers actually raided square enix's office like can you imagine being like the guy in the little cubicle and all of a sudden like swat teams are coming in <laughs> they're drawing and oh yeah 
Hands on yeah. the, hands on the, put your hand, put the, put the pencil down, put the pencil right. down. And oh, by the way, Square Enix published this, right? Yeah, they did, which really kind of shocked me, and I, I didn't even notice until like the very last episode. I seen, you know, the little Square Enix logo down in the corner. Well, that's the thing. You're the um, one that told me about that. I had no idea until you're like, you know, that Square Enix. I'm like, really? Well, no yeah. wonder. You know, no wonder that it's, it's there's so much love for video games in there, and it makes sense. Right. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked that they didn't focus on a bunch of RPGs. I know, right? Yeah. Like I was expecting I mean, to hear I, more about it, more about yeah. like you know, like cr- the Chrono Trigger and all these other games that they that especially Square put out at the time. And instead, yeah. we got uh, you know we got all these fighting games and and almost like a timeline of when they came out in Japan. Right. It was like all Capcom, SNK. It, like I mean, I guess it's kind of cool to Neo like, Geo see that Square Enix is. Yeah, Neo Geo, um, Sega. There was a bunch of Sega stuff. It, it wasn't was... biased. I'll put it that way. Right. I mean, Square Enix definitely could have like completely focused on just their stuff, but uh, you know, instead they focused on other publishers. And which I think is wild. that's what grabbed me when I watched it. Does that make sense? Like, I watched it. and I was like, oh, I remember when I first played this game. You know, I remember going to the yeah. arcades, which I, I don't think arcades are a thing anymore. At least they're not like they used to be. Uh, but I remember going to the arcades and, and watching people play, watching the bigger kids play, you know, these fighting games and wanting to be yeah. to be able to play them. Right, yeah. For me, man, um, you know, I was three when Street Fighter came out. Yeah. So I, I didn't really connect with it in the same way that you did. You're like, you were the perfect age. I mean, you you know, you were you were there for all that. And also, man, I've never been to an arcade. So I was like, oh, God, I why? Why? When, when am I going to get to go see an arcade, man? <laughs> never been to one. Watch the whole anime, full of them. You got to, you got to kind of get the feel of what it was like then. I mean, yeah, yeah. By kinda. watching that, it it sucks because arcades aren't really a thing. They're they're more rare now than they have ever been, in my opinion. Right. And uh, I remember just going to them, and, and people would play, and, and they'd have matches, and you know, you'd have the king of the arc- of certain games, people who were just dominating, mm-hmm. you know. And and I right. was never one of them. I I sucked at arcade games, like especially fighting games. Right. Yeah. Same. Same here. So the premise of the show is basically there's there's a young a young boy like I think I want to say he's in like a grade school or equivalent yeah um, and he's like not very I mean social but he's not very social he's got his his group of friends but uh, he's not I mean according according to if you read about it he's not supposed to be uh, very he's not a handsome person he's not very a looker or whatnot and all this other stuff so all he's got going for him is his game skills. Right, and he gets he goes to this. Uh, they have they have these back to back game stations. I've never been to. Uh, just so you know, Stu, I've never been to a uh, any arcade that had back to back game stations like that, which I right, thought was like bad. Multi- like multiplayer, yes. type setup. Yeah, they're always like side by side. The ones I have seen. The the main <clears> character is <throat> played by Johnny on Bosch, who uh, is really big in the anime industry. If you guys don't know, he was I guess in Power Rangers at one point. Uh, I th- I want to say that's maybe where he started his career. I could be wrong. But uh, big anime, uh, he's played a lot of different people. Uh, I think he played Ichigo and Bleach. He's playing this, I, I forget what game it was. Was it Street Fighter? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he watched Yeah, it. he was like he was like beating people left and right. Everyone was all freaking out, cheering him on. And then like all of a sudden, like this player just totally mops the floor with him. Playing he, as... Like, totally uh, freaks what, out. What's, what's the character she played as? Uh, Zangief. Yangi. Yeah, Zangief. Zangief. Yeah, like yeah. one of the one of the big crazy like big you know if you've played Street Fighter you know Zangief is a big burly motherfucker. And, yeah, uh, yeah, he's the big guy. So you got this like really petite looking proper girl on the other side playing as Zangief and she just wipes the floor with him. So he decides to do this like cheap technique. I forget what he called it, but it's like basically sweep, 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 sweep. Like you just yeah. keep knocking her over. And uh, he won, and then she still beat his ass. Or, you know, or he he changed he changed his technique right. up because he was got, got his confidence back, and she still beat his ass, and that kind of broke his confidence. So after that, did he see her? Yeah, he saw her walking away after that, huh? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, and I, the story just kind of goes from there. Like that, you know, they become rivals. They keep showing up at the arcade together, going against each other. Um, she, yeah, she just keeps keeps on mopping the floor with them. What'd you think of that you know? episode with like the ghost arcade when they were young? Oh yeah, that was yeah that was that was weird, man. That was, was that was a good episode. Yeah, that was that was Probably. before that was before because she leaves at one point. She goes out of 
goes to America. And uh, yeah. but th- I think this was a few uh, this was a few episodes before that where they they have to go run an errand for an old lady and they see an arcade and they're big you know arcade buffs so they both go it's like a what a ten cent arcade yeah yeah it's like a the lo- a local legend like all the all the kids in the in the town where they live are always talking about it and then they go and they go inside they play have a good time and then like they leave and they, I think like one of them forgot something inside and like, like the they keys to the bike it was the keys to the bike. Yeah, and like the the some old man standing by the door, and the he the um, Yaguchi he can't get in, and the old man's like, "Oh, this hasn't been an arcade in years." <laughs> yeah, it closed down. Inside. It closed down since uh, the Atari. You know, they, and that's funny. They even mentioned the Atari downfall. Did they? Yeah, they mentioned. Oh, wow. I think. I think. Uh, I don't know if it was that scene, but he says it's been closed since something or another. So it's like yeah. they went in and played a ghost arcade, which is pretty freaking awesome. Um, <laughs> right. Which, for if anything, watch it for that. Like it's the show in general is really cool. Like it's it's got it's got a good premise. Tell us a little more what what you liked about about High Score Girl. I don't know. Like as someone that edits videos, one thing that like really like always blew my mind was you could tell that the game footage that is used in this anime is real, and it is like the most crisp like like Street Fighter 2 from 1993 in like 4K 120 frames per second and it's it's in all of the shots no matter what the angles are if there's an arcade cabinet like in the shot no matter what the angle is it's like the game footage is still like laid in there perfectly like the, it's the most immaculate editing I've ever seen I can't even wrap my head around it you noticed that too <clears throat> like I I was very impressed by that Right. You know, like me, anytime I'm watching a YouTube video, I'm always kind of thinking like, how do they do this? How, how, like what editing techniques went into this? But with this anime, dude, I mean, everything's out the window. I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah. Everything. Um, if you're looking at it from the side, like you're looking at the game, the console or what, whatnot from the side, it looks like you're yeah. looking at it from the side. You're, you're, you're seeing what you would see in reality more or less. Right. You know, it's not just, uh, it's not just like crappily edited where it's, flat flat service no matter what no matter how you're looking at it it looks the same Um, exactly it's i I was right there with you on that that was so badass and they they do that multiple times throughout the show oh yeah it's happening all the time all the time and i don't know it's just really cool because i don't think i've ever seen that in anime in any anime before um i mean they easily could have just done just a, you know complete screenshots of just the game footage or just you know drew, what i mean and just, just segue right into it yeah instead they use the actual graphics and it looked good and if they didn't use the actual graphics that then it, they were damn close to the actual graphics because it right looked, i was fooled you know there's yeah one of the things i like, think it's funny and i don't tell me what you think i think it's funny because um what was it what was the the uh street fighter 2 character that our main our main character played he played his um the dude Guile. That's, Guile, thank you. Guile yeah. constantly talks to him in his head. Yeah, yeah, he he's like like an imaginary friend yeah. almost. Guile is. He's always giving and, him good uh, advice. Yeah, <laughs> like, you have to be a man, Haruo. Haruo. Don't let the girl leave. You must go say goodbye. Yeah. He always like beats the crap out of Haruo too. Yeah, or well, he hits him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Another another thing about like high score girl that like at first like kind of yeah, it's like how you were talking about uh, Hidaka's uh, eyelashes. Yeah, how like at first it's really jarring. Really, a lot of the animation in High Score Girl in the beginning is really weird, and you have to like kind of force yourself to get through a couple episodes before you will really like get into it because they're constantly like switching between like actual 2d animation and 3d animation that's true and it, it's it's it yeah it can be jarring sometimes some of the scenes are just really they're really weird <laughs> but you know they segue between 2d and 3d really well um you know you might have like one of the characters like appear in 3d in, in on top of a 2d background at times i mean it's and that might be something that's actually a lot more common in anime now a days i don't really watch a whole lot of anime um, I don't see it much. You know, yeah, okay. it could be. So it could it, be yeah. like because this came out. This anime came out in I think 2018, 2019. It could be just a new style that you know. Maybe, so, maybe. It, it does take some getting used to, but you know. The eyelashes I, I mean, thing really got me. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Um, That's like the first thing I warned you about. I was like, the animation. Have you seen, weird, have you seen Fooly Cooly? 
Yes. Do you remember the? Um, I don't know. I don't know the character's name, but the eyebrows guy. Okay. But I know who you're okay. talking about. They refer to him as eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, and like he's like, "What do you mean, eyebrows?" And his gigantic fucking floating off of his head eyebrow like arches up. Yeah, it's, it's it kind of like that. Her her eyelashes kind of remind me of that that guy. It's got it. it the animation, um, like Soul Eater. Soul Eater. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Soul Eater, but Soul Eater's animation was struck when I watched it. Struck me as really weird too. Uh, but when yeah. you watch it, you get used to it. Like you get you you just get so used to it, it just becomes like okay it's normal so i think that's right. kind of like where we're saying it's kind of what happened with this you know the animation was yeah a little different than what we're used to but i think that's kind of what makes it beautiful yeah you know? yeah i mean <clears throat> overall i mean the art style it, it is is amazing you know i mean it, it looks it's a great looking anime um you know it's just yeah it's a little jarring at first to see you know them switching between 2d and, and, and 3d Sometimes you can't even really tell, to be honest. No, if it's if it's two D or three D. So the story basically goes on um, where those two are rivals, right? And there's a point where yeah. she, where she, where where his rival. I can't. What's what's the blue haired gal's name? Um, Ono. Ono. It's and that that's the the rival. Her his rival's Ono. She uh, yeah. she ends up having to leave to to the United States, like I said, uh, and she's from a rich family, so. And she's like what the heiress because yeah, her sister's yeah, she's kind of a uh, she's she's a slacker. Her sister is so so she's the one that has to take up the slack. She's the one that has to right. So she, there's a point where she leaves, and then so you have the main character kind of without this without his his rival, and it it mm-hmm. shows how he moves on, which is kind of cool. What'd you think of that? I thought it was cool, man. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I remember, like, the anime always, like, kind of hints that, that there's, like, a romance happening, or at least starting to happen between Yaguchi and, and Ono. Oh, it feels um, like it. It does. Throughout, yeah, throughout like, the whole series. Y- yeah, yeah, like, uh, whenever she moves, like, Yaguchi, like, goes and runs up into the airport and finds her and gives her this little plastic ring. Um, that he won for at the ghost uh arcade, I at, believe. At the ghost arcade, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, they're, they're kids, so... They don't really realize that that I guess there's there's like a romance happening. There's more than just um, rivalry. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it was definitely sad to. Uh, it was a sad scene whenever she left, but uh, you know, he just kind of carries on with 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 his life, and mm-hmm. you know, he's playing all the new latest fighting games that are coming out. I think they talk um, about he, console games too. Some of them are talking about they they got a console game and. And that's yeah. where he meets the blonde gal, the one with the eye with the eyelashes that we were talking. Yeah, about. that's yep. That's that's Hidaka. Hidaka, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Which you know, for a while first, you were Team Hidaka, weren't you? I dude, I still am Team Hidaka. Uh, I, w- I was too. I, uh, team eyebrows, man, for sure. I, that girl I was too. Lo- she was crazy about about Yaguchi. She and, this girl like went into. She didn't care about video games. She, really. No, she was she was actually like uh, I'm pretty sure she was like a class president yeah she was a smart one <clears throat> yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah so, she got really good grades i i forgot exactly how um yaguchi and hidaka ended up hanging out it didn't I think. really explain they just kind of they just kind of were classmates after she left remember it was like a certain amount of yeah. time later and then and then it just kind of picked up from there and you know she just happened to be in his class and she's following him around and she mm-hmm. ends up walk like walking with him just from school I believe. Well, what I think, what I think, what what I think is what happened is, um, I think Yagichi had to stay late after class one mm. time. I think he might have just like, I don't know, zoned out and was playing his Game Boy in class. <laughs> that sounds about right. Her being class president, I think she had to like stay late and like lock the classroom or something. Oh, once I think everyone you're left. right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how they kind of ended up walking home together. Um, I think they ended up like, I think they had to walk like the same route to get home. And that's kind of how they started to become friends. But uh, it was it was really cool because you got to see kind of like there's there was someone else there, and then, and then of course you know the drama. You're like, oh, there, there might be a th- you know there might be a, a a love triangle going on here. <laughs> yeah, that 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 happens for sure. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Ono, I know Ono eventually comes back. Yeah. She she moves back to Japan. Was um, it like a year later? I think, I think it was a couple years later. I want to say like. I was trying to kind of figure out what grade the characters were in, like because there's a lot of times throughout the throughout the series. Like oh, yeah. they start out, I think they're in like fifth grade, and by the end of the series, I want to say like 
Yaguchi and everyone, they're like juniors in high school. Yeah, because um, I think I think that at one point they even talk about uh, about doing the exams for high school. It's yeah. So I I think I I want to say uh, Ono was gone for maybe two or three years, and I think that. They were in eighth grade when she came back, or ninth grade. I don't know. I don't really. I. It's hard to really come up with like a definitive timeline, but yeah, they they really um, don't. I don't think they say at all. But she comes back. Event. She inevitably comes back eventually. She. It's almost. It's almost like she comes back and she doesn't want to be found. Almost right. Did you get that feeling too? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like I don't know why that was. I can't remember the reasoning behind that. Might have been. Honestly, if I could think about it. I would say it's probably because her her parent her parent or parent figure uh, was really really rough on her about her schooling and all that yeah, stuff. I, yeah, I right. I think what was going on is um oh yeah her tutor lady. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that because uh, we they never just seen a on her. I don't think we've seen a sister, but we never seen a parent. No, no, we've seen a sister. We've seen the old man and the driver. Then her, yeah. the driver guy. Yeah, and then the her tutor. And I, I don't know. I think that um, the tutor lady just like refused to allow Ono to do anything fun because she had to, you know, she wanted her to focus on her high school entrance exams. Yeah, she wanted her to succeed, and because of the family, uh, whatever. Yeah, you know, the, it's. I think Ono, Ono was also like because she was like such prim and proper, and you know, came from a wealthy family. She was always kind of part of like the popular kids crowd. Yeah, and and um, Yaguchi was not. Um, I yeah, think he, that it he hung may out have with also nerds. been like in like this awkward moment, you know what I mean? Like she was back, but we're like, do they do they still remember? He, like, you know, Yaguchi probably wasn't sure if Ono still remembered him. That makes uh, sense. Or if he's just, is he still around? I mean, he kind of he kind of real he, he almost like he sensed her almost because they were at yeah. that uh, that arcade and he was there with with uh, eyebrows. Yeah, and uh, I think he was on a winning streak, and he had to use a restroom or something. And oh yeah, no, um, something happened. He was playing in the arcade. Eyebrows was watching him. He got up and he had to go do something. Hidaka Eyebrows mm-hmm. took over for him, and at the, like the, she lost, and she yeah, she lost against Zangief. The anime heavily hinted that that Ono was there. Yeah, that was um, Ono. Yeah, this yeah. started a rivalry. Which... Right, and and also started the love triangle. Mm-hmm. Hidaka fell head over heels for Yaguchi, and she actually like started becoming a gamer and and like practicing getting consoles at home, letting him borrow consoles, and right. Uh, and then of course, and then of course, uh, Ono, and of course, Ono uh, got close to the uh, the main character as well, and uh, they all it just it just like you could tell that the girls were kind of pretending to be friendly at one point, but yeah. there was really that invisible like hatred <laughs> at right. least on one side the, throughout the whole series even even when they when when ono and the uh, main character got got reacquainted uh he was he still saw her as as his rival like it went but it went from it's funny because it went from like from the very beginning he saw her as a thorn and i'm quoting him a thorn in his side yeah uh to like someone he really liked having around like right you know, like almost a friend, and then it just escalated. But um, yeah, yeah, it's and it's funny too because like I don't, the whole entire series, literally all the way up until like pretty much the last episode, Yaguchi is completely clueless that Hidaka is mad madly in love with him, and he's completely clueless that he is in love with Ono. Yep. And the two of them, Ono and Hidaka, they're both aware of each other's feelings. Well, it takes Guile and to they, kick his ass. Yeah, Guile always punching him in the back always, of the head. Yeah, always punching him in the back of the head and kicking his butt and getting him like, "Hey, the, wake up, be a man." And it was, yeah. it's, it. And those conversations are always funny because I think um, Ono's Ono's inner avatar is, uh, of course, uh, Zangief. Yes. So there's times, mm-hmm. there's times that like you see him talking in the background, like Zangief yeah. will talk to to Guile, and it's fucking hilarious. Right. I don't think Hidaka ever had anybody like that. I don't. If she think did, so I, I can't remember. I don't think so either. I th- but she got to be a pretty badass gamer. I'll give her that. Yeah, yeah, she did. Like the game mm-hmm. got so hardcore that there was even game gangs. <laughs> gamer gangs. Oh, the show got yeah. so hardcore. Yeah, there was gamer right. gangs. Like there was like, you know, if you beat us, you get this territory and all this stuff. And 
Yeah. I, mean, I guess it's better than fighting, but uh, right, it's a bit much. Um, yeah. So, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get towards the ending here. Uh, towards the end, um, the main character realizes he does love Ono, like he does yeah. care for her. Uh, and then he he's basing all of it on like a tournament, like this, gi- this giant game tournament that she that he won, but she was she she I wouldn't say she let him win, but she lost because one of the controllers was broken because one of the spoiled brat kids broke it. Yeah. So they're more or less redoing the uh, the tournament that he that he won almost unfairly. His plan was well, well they did this tournament when they were kids. She it was moved. before she left the first time. It was on a it was uh, on a field trip. I remember that they left. Yeah. They, they ditched the field trip to go do right. this. They both did it and they didn't do it planned together. They did it just to do it and they just happened to be there together. So anyway, well yeah, by the time Yaguchi finally realizes like that he he actually really likes Ono, like, romantically. Um, he decides that he is going to confess his love to her at the tournament if he can win. If he beats her. So, like, the plan was, is they both, like, you know, go through the whole entire tournament. They're both, like, the two, you know, in the semifinals. And if he beats her, he'll confess his his, his love to her. Which is kind of weird, because, like, well, what do you do if you lose? Are you not going to confess I'm your love to her? going to keep it to yourself? <laughs> like, I thought that, too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, just was kinda, tell her, dude. Like, a, right. It was kind of a weird plot point. But, yeah, that's his plan, is essentially he's going to... I want to say propose to her, but he's not proposing to her. But you get the idea. Yeah. That's his plan. Well, he's he's and and I guess confessing your feelings is a big deal. Like, I mean, it is. I guess if you're that age, and and then of course, yeah. at, at the same time, we don't realize is that's pro that's pro. It's gonna it's supposed to be their last game together. He doesn't know this because no. Ono's being shipped back to the United States permanently, supposedly. Yeah, uh, her parents are making her go, and and by this time, her. Uh, her tutor actually kind of got her head out of her ass and was letting her have fun and letting her mm-hmm. do things. And um, because up until up until a certain point, her tutor was literally just a pain in the ass, you just right. getting in the way. Like you can't play games, you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, there was one point, I, I, and this is a plot point I gotta say. There was one point where the tutor took away all her her game systems, everything, and um, the main character made it. He used RPG Maker to make an RPG for her. And it was about yeah. her situation, and the right. first boss was like her sister. Yeah, yeah, the old man, the old man uh, limo driver dude. Yeah, uh, yeah, he he bought her a Super Nintendo and kept it in his room, and yeah, yeah, he he was the the old man driver guy. He was really cool. He was oh, super yeah. supportive. He was of, of Ono. He was a father figure almost, and at least how I looked at it to her, and he was he yeah. really wanted to like boost that imagination and like all that 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 fun side of her that because throughout the throughout this whole anime she never speaks no i was waiting so long and that's why i'm team hadaka bro that <laughs> fuck that purple hair girl didn't even she didn't even have the decency to say a word bro. she made noises she like <laughs> kicked and hit our main yeah. character she like you can tell when she was mad but i think i think that they were, and I, I know this is something that bothers the hell out of you. You hate it when protagonists or, or heroes are quiet. I think they were going for that with her. I think that that's why they wrote her that way. I think that they, they, because it was kind of like a, a wink, wink, Square Enix, wink, wink, you know, yeah. Chrono Trigger, uh, quiet hero, wink, wink, something. kind something. of thing. I and, don't know. <clears throat> but it annoyed All the shit out of me too that she didn't say. Yeah. That. It was, I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the art style. Eventually, I just kind of got used to it, I guess, you know, or accepted it. Um, but that I agree with you. That's why I was eyelashes instead of her because you you could hear and the voice acting was done very well. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the eyelashes when she spoke. There's a point where she actually like confessed her love, and there was a really awkward point where I think she tried to kiss. Or she did kiss him, and oh, brother, she tried to do more than just kiss well, him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that scene. Yeah, bro. Oh. She was like wanting to go to a love hotel. She even straight up said, "Like, I'll let you do more than kiss me." Yeah. Well, he was. Yeah. A, I, I gotta give him credit. He was a gentleman. He he was retarded. <laughs> 
I would say he was a gentleman, but he didn't even understand what was happening. No, he was he was completely dumb <laughs> when it came to like, like you know, he just wanted to play video games all night long. I believe. Yeah. And pretty I, much, yeah. I mean, if I was of that age and a girl was like, "Hey, do 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 do," I'd be like, "Okay, let's." Where's the hotel at? You know. Right. But. Yeah. It. it I mean. But the, I'm talking about the scene after that day where they're um where they're talking and she basically teary eyed confesses her love to him. And Ono's like right behind him, or her, one of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He he does, in my opinion, I think he does the right thing. He takes them both because she tries to run off, and I think she, Ono grabs her, and he takes them both home, more or less, because they yeah. got lost in the yeah. city. I think didn't they? Um, it was the, it was I after that gang I, battle. I, I think they got lost at some point. I don't yeah. remember if they were lost whenever that happened. I oh think no, they, they just actually, didn't have the money the next, to go home. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they, was. like, stayed in a 24-hour restaurant all night or yeah, something. Yeah, that's what it was, yes. It wasn't games. They were in a 24-hour restaurant. He didn't want to go to the hotel. Yeah. Oh, youth. But right. Yeah, so, that and honestly, like, there were points, in, and that's when you know it's good writing. There are points where you're, like, you're rooting for someone. You want someone, like, you're, you know, your team eyelashes and... and and all that. If if you actually feel that strongly about those two getting together, then that's good writing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. The the writing really was good. Um, the last episode, dude. Holy moly! Like that was heavy, bro. Mm-hmm. That was heavy. Like I'm not even like exaggerating when like I was like I almost I almost I, yeah I yeah, almost started teary-eyed, crying. Bro. Teary-eyed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're like, well, okay, and, okay. Okay, I'm fine. I don't fine. think I don't think I've actually had a reaction that intense to an anime before. Oh, I have, but I've watched probably hundreds of anime. So yeah, in the scene that I'm talking about is awesome, but perfect. I mean, it was great. Voice well, go ahead, acting. go ahead and dis- dis- discuss. Let's discuss that. Let's talk because uh, they end up. Are you talking about during the tournament or after? Um, after all no, that. I'm t- I'm talking about like the the very last scene when when Ono moves away. Okay. Again, yeah. For real. Yeah, she like, to America to get mm-hmm. into an arranged marriage and all that. Yeah, well, go ahead, go ahead and bring us up to that. Oh yeah, so so after the tournament, um, I don't remember exact. I actually don't remember what happened at the tournament. Um, well, they fought. Uh, they the I, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. They they played. Um, our main character one did good. Ono lost the first round. Remember? Yeah. And then she like had. Zangief give her a pep talk in her imagination and came back from the losers and they ended up playing each other I believe I can't remember mm-hmm. who won though I think she won I don't know man I almost feel like it just fast forwarded yeah um I can't I can't I hate to say it I can't remember but okay go, remember let's either. go so from that point on we'll go to the scene you're talking about I think at yeah so at some point I think right before the tournament happened um oh no finally somehow without using her voice and words told yaguchi that she was moving away for real this time um somehow just, without, I, us- without using her voice and words yeah between punches kicks and sighs oh, she somehow no. communicated it to him didn't he find out through like her sister who was much more talkative than oh, anyone else yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah 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 yaguchi finds out from her sister um but he he plays it off and he doesn't like you know he doesn't tell Oh no, that he knows or anything like that. I or maybe he did. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah. Basically, what happens is is you know after the tournament, you fast forward a couple weeks, and um, Yaguchi is just avoiding her. You know, he he doesn't. He's just he's given up. We got his license yeah, to uh, to to kind of like impress her at one point. Yeah. Yeah. And he's and not I even mean, he's he's depressed. You can tell like he's not really riding his bike no more. He had a moped. He had like a scooter. Yeah. Yeah. He's just he's given up on life basically yeah he's like um, fuck games fuck life the girl i love everyone is yeah and uh, like everyone's giving him a hard time about not making a big deal about ono leaving oh, even his and, mom who was a big part of the show but yeah yeah so he's not he's not gonna see her off he, i don't know he's just too he's too defeated to go see her off didn't she give him back his ring she did at one point yeah 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 she did um, and I think that that's why he felt so down and didn't want to see her off. I, I, I don't think he understood why she gave it back. Yeah, it was you know more of I mean? like a keepsake, like remember me, like he did with her. Yeah, I think exactly. that's what the original concept. But he saw it like as forget me, I'm I'm leaving for good. 
Right. I think that's where. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that. I think uh, eventually Guile shows up and just like tears him a new a hole. Verbally, and he gets on his moped. Yeah, verbally, and uh, probably yeah, physically he, he too. Just, but yeah, he gets on his moped and freaks out and like goes like three hundred miles an hour all the way to the airport. There's even like a scene yeah. where, where he's talking to Guile while he's doing it. And, like, there's a scene where, like, all the characters are, like... It's almost like they're giving him a super boost so he goes fast. Yeah, I think, like, Guile Sonic booms the back of his moped. And, yeah. like, a bunch of other characters pop up and, like, block the traffic and stuff. Yeah, it's it's um, it's kind of... It's almost like, oh, like, it hits you, hit you right here. And you're just like, oh, man, this is... Yeah. You know, it's like, a, it's like a bad 80s movie scene, but really well written. Right. But yeah, and then he he just he gets to the he gets to the airport and they say their goodbyes and they're crying and you know just hyperventilating just completely all freaking out like and the voice crying. acting is is amazing mm-hmm. throughout all of that captures the emotions perfectly like you like Yaguchi's voice you can tell he's like so emotional that his voice is cracking and he sounds like a totally different person. Oh, Johnny Anvash is is an amazing voice actor. He really is. It was so so that was the point you were saying that it almost brought you to tears. Yeah, 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 it was really sad, man. It's really sad. No, um, it goes on a little after that. And the timeline goes a little further than that, doesn't it? But it that that scene was very sad, uh, and it was very it was heart wrenching. It really was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's a it, high score girl is. It's a pretty wholesome, pretty wholesome little anime. It's not Definitely necessarily not. like one of those animes that that. You know, there's some of them that are just super pervy. That's all fan yeah. service. It's not. It's got its moments. Like it's got. It's got its moments where you're like, "Huh, okay, that's funny." But they're more jokes than anything. It's not like you know, wink, yeah. wink. Watch this. There's boobies and panty shots. It's. It's not right. necessarily about that. It's more about games and more about you know. There's a little hint of romance here and there up until a certain yeah. point, and then right. It's just a really fun. If you were to rank it for like one to ten, what would it be? Oh man be hard to do that because i honestly that's probably like the first anime i've watched like actually watched in a couple solid years to be honest but i mean i would rank it pretty high man i mean i would say i don't know i'd probably give it a solid seven or eight yeah it was was seven or eight for sure um now we need to get you to watch beck Mongolian Chop Squad. So you were telling me about that, but I gotta find a place to watch it. And what's funny when you say Beck, I keep thinking of the music, uh, the the band. Uh, right, right, yeah, yeah. The the title is so weird. Yeah, Mongolian between like thinking Chop about Squad. Beck, the the actual musician, and then like Mongolians riding around on Harleys. Let's let's hear let's hear a little bit about Beck Mongolian Chop Squad. So okay, yeah. So well, I mean, like I said, the title throw it out the window. It I don't even know why they Doesn't called it that. Shit. It makes no sense. No. So, and I've actually known about it. I knew about it for years before I watched it. Um, it is about it's it's honestly it's kind of like High Score Girl, but it's about playing music, being okay. a rock star, starting a rock and roll band. This this kid he's working at a restaurant after school, make a little bit of extra money, um, and I think this this dog attacks him out in the back alley, back behind the restaurant that he works at. And the, the dog's owner, like, runs up, you know, calms the dog down, apologizes to the kid, and he has a guitar on his back. And the little kid sees that, and he decides to buy a little acoustic guitar. Mm. And he keeps working at that restaurant, and he, he you know, he keeps running in, running into this kid. And eventually they have, like, a little jam session, like, back behind the restaurant. Forms this, this friendship with this other dude, and the dude, like, invites him over to this little jam space that him and his band have. And the kid plays, and it... It just kind of goes from there, man. This kid, like, their band gets really, really big, really huge. They're playing at, like, these festivals. And, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the summary of it. Um, at it's, the very end, the band the band falls apart, but the kid keeps playing his guitar. And I think, like, the final couple final scenes are, are like, the kid at some record studio. Oh, okay. Like, playing for some producers. That's pretty cool. Like, it sounds like a really good anime. I'll have to check. Yeah. Like I said, I, I got to check it out. I just got to find where I can see it. Like... Right, it's it's tough, man. Um, Crunchyroll is pretty much my best bet. Um, uh, or Funimation dot com. I, I think that it, I mean, I think it's going to cost money to watch it, no matter where you try to watch it. But that'll be um, a problem. 
I've got so yeah. much. I've got so many streaming devices. There's so much streaming services already. I know, it's, cra- it's crazy, man. It's it's almost getting to the point where cable's going to be cheaper again, cheaper than Hulu and all these streaming services. The, but, to be uh, able to compete, yeah, they're going to have to. Yeah. I think that yeah. cable, honestly, I think cable just got too big for its britches. And then, and not, like anything, an alternative comes out and they're like, oh, right. shit, we fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Um, but, yeah, the, the animation style is, is amazing, okay. you know. Um, you can actually like if you're a musician or you know how to play guitar you can actually like look at their hands and they are actually like doing the chords properly damn and all the animation is like it's done and matches like the timing of the music so like you could watch the bass player watch the frets that they're playing and where they're sliding their hands up and down the fretboard and watch their fingers hitting the strings and it will match the music perfectly so like they animated it literally to the music yeah yeah, and there's there's I mean there's no 3D computer animation, nothing. It's all it's all hmm. two dimensional hand drawn. It's That's well done. That's bravo. It's a good one. Highly underrated. So there there's another there's an extra for you guys if you're interested. Look up uh, Beck Mongolian Chop Squad and yep. check it out. Uh, but definitely watch High Score Girl if you get a chance. Uh, so I think that'll be it, guys. We'll see you on the next episode uh, next week. All right, guys. Uh, Till then, we want you to stay nerdy, stay sexy, always. <laughs>